Hello, people. I'm here with a very special guest. He's Lawrence from Coffee Cup English. Welcome to the channel, my friend. How are you today? Thanks, Rod. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm very well. Yeah, I just, um, I just bought a house today, so uh, today's a good day for me. Nice. Could you tell us why did you decide to be an English teacher? Well, I first taught English when I was 22. I, uh, I went to Colombia. I lived in Colombia for a year. And really, the, the, the best way for me to find work was to teach English. So I took the CELTA, you know, the, um, the, the teaching certificate uh, in London and went over to Colombia with, with my CELTA in hand and fortunately found work um, in International House. And I worked there for a year. And I, I kind of realized that being an English teacher was, was like a passport to the world. It, it really opened up every possible country except, you know, uh, native English speaking countries. Um, so, and I, and I found that um, I, I have quite itchy feet when I've been in a, in a place for too long. You know, I, I get that desire to want to, to go somewhere else. So um, later on, I was working in, in London in business um, mm -hmm. and I, I had a desire to, to travel abroad. So then I, I taught English in China um, for another year. And then I went back to England and went back to my business role. I found that teaching English, it's not that great for earning money, but it's really good for traveling. So I, I kind of had these two careers. Mm -hmm. um, and then later on, I, I went to UAE and I ran a business there. Mm -hmm. And then I came to Malaysia and I was thinking about what to do. You know, do I, do I go back to teaching or do I stick with, with running businesses? Because I've got this kind of the, the, the taste, the taste for business. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, well, let's try and do both together. So that's why I set up Coffee Cup English, which is my own business, but it's focused around me teaching English. So it really, it really ticks both boxes and it's, uh, it satisfies my, my two career paths, really. Where in the world are you now? I am in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Wow. And mm. how does it feel to be moving out here and there? To teach English? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you get used to it, to be honest. The, the first time you, 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 tr you work abroad or you live abroad, it feels very different. You get the culture shock and everything. And then after a while, if you've done it a couple of times, you really do get this sort of citizen of the world feel where you can pretty much move anywhere and, and you, can, you can be happy anywhere. And you start looking at things like what's most important, like weather <laughs> is really important. Uh, the food, the local food is really important. Um, the people, whether you feel safe in those places. So as long as it ticks all those boxes for me, then, then I'm very comfortable. And Malaysia definitely does. It's a wonderful place to live. So we might say that you have the travel bug. The funny thing is, I love living abroad, but I don't enjoy traveling that much. But like, it's, it's funny, you know, I, I, I hate going to the airport. I hate queuing. I'm not a massive fan of flying. I'm not scared of it. I just, it makes me impatient and grumpy <laughs> when i go to a new place i'm like i don't know i love living in different countries uh, mm -hmm. and working in different countries and sort of being part of the culture but but once i'm there i quite like to, to stay there you know yes what is your favorite part about teaching i think um well i i've only really taught adults um i've never i've never taught children i have a, i've had a couple of you know private uh, classes with children and I never enjoyed it mm -hmm. and I think it's because when you're teaching adults they have made a conscious decision to to want to improve their English mm -hmm. uh, and usually they've put some money down so there's a little investment on their part mm -hmm. and there is a motivation on their part they've they've looked at their life and they've thought okay my life would be better if my English was better you know, maybe I could get a better job or I could get a promotion or a pay rise or I will feel more confident in, in, my, in my job or I will be more able to, to socialize with people. So there is a definite benefit that they see. And that means that when they come to the class, they're bringing that motivation and that positive energy. Mm -hmm. So you're in, a, you're in a room. And I imagine this is the same with, for example, personal trainers. 
you're, you're in a room with, with a bunch of people who are, have recognized that they want to improve their life and they're taking steps to do that. Uh -huh. And you're, and that, so that creates this amazing energy. And the fact that I can be a part of that and I can help them with that aspect uh, is, is just so rewarding for me. Uh -huh. So uh, I think that's why it's, it's, it's the fact of being around people who are taking the initiative to improve their life. That, that's the, the most enjoyable thing for me. Do you have any fond memory as far as your teaching career is concerned? So when I was in China, I, we, they used to do these, these things, they called them eye shows. It was basically like English corner where mm -hmm. you would, you know, normally most classes, you, you had a, uh, a syllabus that you had to mm -hmm. follow. You, you worked your way through the textbook. But the, the eye shows, these English corners, you were, you were free to, to do anything. Um, so you could do a, uh, you could choose the topic you wanted to do a class on, mm -hmm. and then you prepared the materials. Mm -hmm. And at first, it's a little bit difficult because you're kind of wary. You don't know what you can do, and you're you're a little bit nervous. And th there were a lot of people. I had like 30, 40 students in these. But after a while, I sort of I started pushing it and pushing it, seeing what I could do, and. I ended up, I had to do so many different things that I would like think of, I'm like, okay, I've got to do another, another eye show. What should I do it on? And I'm looking around like, uh, uh, furniture. Okay, we're going to do one on furniture. And we're going to have some people, they're going to be furniture salesmen and they're going to sell to these people. And they, or I would think, okay, I'm going to do uh, dating. Okay, right, we're going to teach the boys what they need to do to pick up girls. <laughs> or we would do ones on... What does it mean to be an honorable person? So it would be just anything I could think of. Mm -hmm. and, and then we create a class on it. And that was, that was so cool to have that complete freedom. And I found ever since then, if I w when I went back to regular teaching and they say, right, here's your textbook. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get through all these lessons by the end of the month. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, it's not quite the same. That's why I wanted to set up my own because I have total control. So, you know, I can like... Uh, last Saturday, my class was all about uh, property agents because I've been looking at properties. So that's where my head is. So I thought, okay, let's do a, let's do a class on that. So I had the, you know, the students, one of them would be a property agent, one of them would be a buyer and they you know, wow. listened to them and told them what they were looking for and then put it together and they found some houses and sent them to them. And so it was, it was really good fun. So we could say that it's kind of a dog may teaching as well. Yeah, I guess so. I guess yeah. I used to, I remember when I first heard about dogma teaching, I thought, oh, that's just when you're too lazy to prepare anything. But it's not quite dogma teaching because I, I, will, I will spend a good few hours before mm -hmm. preparing, mm -hmm. thinking, okay, this is the vocab I want to mm -hmm. fit in there. Maybe there'll be a bit of grammar that I can fit in. Mm -hmm. um, but it will more be focused around the activity, mm -hmm. the task. It's a bit like you said about wanting to, to have your students learn without realizing they're learning. Yes. Um, that's kind of a similar thing. You know, they're not focused on improving their English. They're focused on trying to sell, sell a house to this person. And the other one is, is focused on trying to get a good deal for that house. But actually, inadvertently, they're, mm -hmm. they're practicing key uh, mm -hmm. English speaking skills. Kind of like role playing, right? Oh, yeah. Role play is a huge part. I love, mm -hmm. uh, I love all, all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious. How can mm. you come up with uh, such good ideas for your social medias? Well, usually, um, because I have my, my students, generally what I'll do is, is um, when they, there will be an issue that comes up, like mm -hmm. uh, they will be saying, you know, oh, my, my, my dad work as, a, as an accountant. And I'll be like, no, 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 your dad works as an accountant. And then the next person says, oh, really? yeah, my, my dad also works as an accountant. I'm like, no, 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 my dad works. <laughs> so, and I realized, okay, this is an issue that people have. So I'll mm -hmm. make a note of it. Uh, so, I'll, and then I will think, okay, what's, what can be a, a, a short, snappy, fun way to, mm -hmm. to teach this? I'll try to, to put in an example, because I think people learn better when they see an example. Like yeah. if you just tell them a bunch of rules, it mm -hmm. goes in one ear and out the other. But if they can see an example, that's why I like to do a little bit of acting, mm -hmm. you know, to act out a situation of when you might use this, this word or this grammatical form. Yes. Um, 
then uh, I find that, that people seem to respond better to that. Um, I think also because of the, uh, you know, I, I haven't really done much on, on YouTube or any others. TikTok is the only platform where I've, I've really been successful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on, on, on TikTok, people are just swiping, swiping, swiping. They'll give you maybe three seconds mm -hmm. to, you know, to listen. So you've really got to figure out a way to, to get their interest early. And I think I, I like having those constraints, those parameters. You got my attention in one and a half second. There you I go. You. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> what do you miss most about the UK? Um, cheese and sausages. <laughs> you can't get good. For somebody in Malaysia, the cheese aisle is, yeah. is about that, that wide. It's one mm -hmm. shelf and mm -hmm. there's about two, three different cheeses mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And the sausages are all like Frankfurter sausages. Um, so that's pretty much it. In, in England, you have a real, so many different types of cheeses. Um, other than that, uh, I have a, a couple of good friends that I haven't seen in, in a long time. I'd like yes. to see them again. Um, we don't have, in, in Malaysia, there's no real seasons. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, it's either rainy or less rainy. Um, there's no, whereas in, in England, you know, you, now you will be seeing the, uh, the, the red colors mm -hmm. in the in the leaves mm -hmm. and then you know the winter's coming and then after that you've got the anticipation of spring coming mm -hmm. and then the, the, the joy of, of summer um so we don't have that so maybe i missed that a little bit but honestly not that much mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I much prefer having just glorious weather all the time do you speak any other language besides english uh yeah i speak a little spanish Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and Italian and French and a little Chinese as well uh, just basically what I've picked up from uh, you know I learned I learned some Spanish while I was in Colombia mm -hmm. and then I found that the other Latin languages are pretty mm -hmm. pretty similar mm -hmm. you, you know in terms of the, gra the grammatical rules mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you can you can use Spanish as a foundation to learn the other Latin languages mm -hmm. Uh, and then I, I spent a year in China and, and picked up a little bit of Chinese yes. there. It was a great surprise for me knowing that you can speak some uh, Portuguese. Right. You know? <laughs> so that's really nice. Let me ask you one thing. Do you think that um, being a global citizen, because that's what mm -hmm. you are, uh, makes it easier to teach English around the world? Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, you can tell even with my accent. It's, it's not, the people say like, oh, your accent isn't that English. <laughs> What is it then? You know, because uh, I'm actually from the north of England. I'm from Yorkshire where the accent is actually very strong there. Mm -hmm. um, but I never had a very strong Yorkshire accent any, anyway, but mm -hmm. from living abroad, from, you know, a lot of my good friends are American, mm -hmm. um, living ab abroad, I've definitely neutralized my accent a lot. Mm -hmm. And I know that's, that's helpful for, for students. Um, but also, yeah, I mean, the, the fact that I can, I know, especially I know, I know pretty good grammar in different languages. So, you know, like, like take Chinese, for example, mm -hmm. the, if, if you want to say she is the, the girl I met at the party last night mm -hmm. in Chinese, the, the, the formation of that would be, she is the last night at the party I met girl. Wow. So it's completely completely reversed or you know or you know just a simple one like the latin language is mm -hmm. how you would put subject object verb rather than mm -hmm. subject verb object so knowing these little things mm -hmm. and knowing some pronunciation issues i think it does help you uh kind of zone in on on those mistakes and when you're teaching something you know okay this is going to be tricky for them because it's mm -hmm. completely different to their native language mm -hmm. whereas if you already know a bit you can say okay it's a bit like this Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? What's your favorite piece of grammar to teach? I like the, uh, I like the conditionals. I like the, I like the second conditional. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, I think uh, the, the thing is, uh, well, second and third conditionals are, are cool because what you're basically teaching is your, or, or when you, when you can use the second and third conditionals, it's like it gives you access to a parallel universe because really what you're doing is you're saying, okay, what if 
this were true, mm-hmm. what if I had a million dollars? I don't have a million dollars, but mm-hmm. what, you know, if I had a million dollars or if I hadn't done that, and it's like in a parallel universe where something is different. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that's, that's kind of cool. And, and it's, it's challenging. It's, it's pretty difficult. You know, a lot of, you know, um, a lot of, especially Latin languages, you have your own mm-hmm. form, conjugation form for that. Whereas in English, we just go mm-hmm. back in time one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, yeah, I think there's something fun about that. Do your students hate grammar as much as mine do? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I, maybe because I love grammar so much. I do um, too. <laughs> because do well, the too. thing what I what I say to them is like, look, okay, let's say we teach vocabulary and grammar, and I mean a lot of, especially in schools, I find they are ninety percent vocabulary, ten percent grammar. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in, in, I remember in uh, French class, I could name, I could say what a monkey, I, how how to say monkey before I could say although, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, how often do I say monkey? Whereas although. And however, I use that all the time. So why are we focusing on that? But, mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, they've got to make sure you know all the colors. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know, let's, let's get to that later. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if you compare vocabulary and grammar, if you spend three hours teaching vocabulary mm-hmm. and you, you get through quite a few words and they, they remember them, uh, maybe they're not going to remember all of them, but they remember, say, 20% of the words that you talk. Mm-hmm. How much better is their language? Yeah. Tiny, tiny better. Whereas if you spend three hours hammering the, the verb forms, going through, okay, the active voice, the passive voice, how to use a conditional, when to use the present perfect instead of past simple, mm-hmm. you're, suddenly you're, your language opens up whole new dimensions mm-hmm. and you can vroom, make yeah. such a huge step in, yeah. in focusing yeah. on grammar. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think once students realize that, they can see, wow, yeah, why am I wasting my time with vocab? Let's focus on the grammar. We'll deal with the vocab. Yeah, later. That will come. interesting. That's something that happens with the helping verbs. Once you yeah. know how, how to work around do, does, did, will, and would, you can mm-hmm. work the verbs in a funny way, I may say. Yeah, and yeah. it gives you more, more creative freedom. Yeah, of course. Let me ask you one last question before we go to the rapid round game that everybody mm-hmm. loves. What is the advice that you give my students, my audience, mm. to keep studying English? Motivation seems to be one of the hardest things to keep. Mm-hmm. Um, so often I, I find you know, people, and myself included, by the way, mm-hmm. wake up one day full of beans thinking, right, that's it. I, I, my, my, my English has sucked for so long. I'm doing it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on it. It's mm. going to be this time next year, I will be speaking like Hermione Granger. I don't know. And uh, so the, um, the problem is uh, three days later, four days later, that, that motivation seems to wane. And I don't think there's much you can do about that. Maybe you can listen to some motivational tapes or, or something like that. But ultimately... If you are at the whim of your motivation, you won't succeed. The only way is to develop habits. And this is why I think studying an actual course, paying the money, putting some investment, because that takes the habit out of your hand. Then it's not you saying, right, that's it. I'm going to wake up at 7 a.m. every morning and I'm going to open up my grammar books because that won't last. We all know that won't last. Whereas if you pay to actually study, and you've got your, your course schedule, you've got maybe you know, a daily class or, or every two days or something, you start, to, it won't be that hard at first. And then after, say, two or three weeks, that's just your habit. That's just like brushing your teeth. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just something that you do. And you will improve without even trying. Mm-hmm. You won't even need to keep yourself pushing forward because you've developed that habit. So that would be, that would be my advice. Make the investment. Uh, I- make sure that somebody else can hold you accountable to that. I agree. I used to say that um, studying English is like going to the gym. Right. You exactly. know, you, once you stop, you lose everything that you have conquered so far. Mm-hmm. And if you yeah. have a personal trainer with you, which would be the teacher, you would yeah. keep motivated as well. 
also consistency is very important you know exactly so, yeah um, so and I that's, agree but that's why with you. starting a course because it takes it out of your hands yeah. it's not like you creating your own schedule they uh -huh. they give you the schedule they say all you've got to do is show up at these times mm-hmm Yes. Let me tell you one thing. I have to uh, have physical therapy sessions, as I told you before, because of my disability. But if I don't have a physical therapist with me, I don't want to go, you know, right. so I have to <laughs> yeah. have somebody to to make me do that. You know, so, yeah. well, I think now we can go to the rapid round game. Traveling the world is worth doing once. Yeah, I agree. My favorite book is... For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway. My favorite word in English is... Coffee. Coffee is... Is, is my drug. <laughs> Lawrence on Lawrence. Joyful. I agree. <laughs> and the last one from me, being an English teacher. Is my calling. Awesome. <laughs> Now you can ask me your questions. Uh, I might give you a either or some either or questions. It, it works. Okay. okay. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Books or TV? Both. You can't have both. <laughs> Books. If you could live in any country, where would you live? Actually, I would live in a city that I love. And I've been there many times. New York City. What are you most grateful for in life? For my children. For my job. For English. If I was coming to, to your house for dinner, uh, what would you cook for me? I would make Brazilian staple food. Rice, white mm -hmm. rice and beans. And nice. the Brazilian barbecue. Nice. That's uh, what's that? What's the meat with the pet? Begins with P. It begins with the the, the, the picanha. Picanha. No, picanha no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We can, we can have uh, some picanha as a barbecue as well. I'll take yes. that. Yeah, yeah. All right. That we can good. grill a picanha for you. Well, okay. you're more than invited to come to Brazil to visit me. You know. So. All right. For every guest, I have a sentence, a quote to take away. And I think mm -hmm. that you are too young. Mm -hmm. And the content that you have on TikTok is great. And I could see that you have a passion for teaching mm -hmm. as much as I do. So keep doing what you like to do. Keep being this much friendly because mm -hmm. you are very friendly. And I could also say I am a teacher for over 25 years now mm. to have teacher delivery. Mm. I can see that your eyes shine when you speak about teaching, traveling, right. keep being inspired. And it was a huge pleasure to meet you. Yeah. It was awesome to okay. have you on the channel for an interview. Thank you for accepting. And I hope you liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you want, you want to invite me back, I'm, I'm open to it. Of course. This was my friend Lawrence from coffeecupenglish.com. I'll put his links in the description down below. I hope you liked it as much as I did. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lawrence. Bye. Thanks. See Thanks. You. Bye bye. Thank you. Hello, it's Rod's friend here, Gino from Real Everyday English. Sorry for interrupting your video. I just want to make a quick recommendation that you subscribe to Rodrigo's channel. He's an amazing guy. He's so humble, he's so dedicated, and he creates absolutely fantastic content. See you people soon. Bye bye. God bless.